Hi, I'm Travis and I'm an engineer on the academic team here at National Instruments. And today I want to show you a new approach to teaching frequency response calculations of filtering circuits. As you know, active filters are very common building blocks of electronic circuits. When a student is introduced to the concept for the very first time, a single low pass op amp filter, such as the one shown here, is a good example to explain the circuit theory and how to mathematically calculate the cutoff frequency. However, when circuit complexity increases, such as in the case of this third order low pass filter, the theory becomes much more challenging. In this new approach, we can start in the same place as traditional coursework by using an exercise in a popular textbook to theoretically calculate the frequency response of a cascaded filter. But I won't stop there. I'll then enforce that theory with spice simulation and a lab exercise. So now, I'm going to jump into a spice simulation circuit where I can build the same circuit with spice models of industry standard parts commonly used in professional designs. Here I'm using multi-sim as my spice simulator. I'm going to go ahead and open my three-stage low-pass filter. And on the circuit schematic, I also have multiple virtual instruments that allow me to quickly evaluate the circuit behavior and experiment with an infinite number of scenarios, iterating different component values, circuit topologies, and different types of op-amp spice models. Over here, I have a function generator generating a sinusoidal input, and I also have an oscilloscope and Bode plotter instruments connected to the input and the output of this circuit. Let's take a look at that. Now, if I go ahead and run this simulation and open my Bode plotter, and we, and we see that we get that output Bode plot of this three-stage low-pass filter. But we're not just going to stop there. Let me go ahead and stop this simulation. So now we're going to use some hardware to reinforce that theory. In this case, I'm going to use the NI Elvis 2, which seamlessly integrates with this multi-sim environment. On the Elvis, we have a built circuit that shows the three stages here with their three cutoff frequencies. Now our Elvis board allows us to provide a signal with our function generator and read back that signal with an oscilloscope the same way we did in the multi-sim environment. Let's take a look. So here, I'll just go ahead and choose the actual Elvis device instead of a simulated device. And I'll make the stimulus channel, or the channel I'm going to look at for the signal I'm providing, be AI0. And then I'm going to make the response channel AI1. And this is going to look at one of the stages of our low pass filter. So let's go ahead and look at that. I'm going to go ahead and allow real data to overlay on top of the simulated data. And as you can see, from a single stage, we have a low pass filter characteristic, but its roll off is nowhere near our simulated data. But that's because we're looking at one stage. Now let's look at the response channel AI2 to look at what happens from two stages. I'm going to go ahead and run that again. And now we're seeing that our roll off is getting a little bit closer to what our simulated data had. But once again, this is two stages. So I'm going to go ahead and add in that third stage by looking at AI channel 3 and running our simulation one more time. And as you can see, the hardware output matches very closely to the simulated data. Now we can ask questions like, why doesn't it match exactly? But that's for the textbook. So we just finished looking at a three-stage low-pass filter in not only the textbook, but in simulation and hardware. For students, this experience of going from theory to simulation and then to actual interaction with the circuits leads to a much deeper comprehension of the theory. To further explore this approach to teaching analog circuits or active filtering specifically, Download the free course for a link on this page.